Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. This is our weekly coffee talk with the doc. This week we are covering supplements. Have you ever been looking at a pet supplement? Wondering, is this gonna benefit my pet's health? Should I give this? What can I do? And you turn around the bottle and you're like, I don't know what to look at. Like, this is so confusing. Maybe you felt really overwhelmed or maybe you've been in a position like I've been in where you have a pet who maybe develops cancer or gets sick and you wanna do everything possible to help them. And so I see this all the time with my clients. What we'll do, because we want to help our sick pets and make them feel better, is we get everything. We buy all the supplements, we get everything. And what happens then is now we're giving 15, 20 different things to our pet, hoping that it fixes them and not really knowing, is this causing harm? Is this helping them? Now your dog or your cat might not be eating. So we can create a whole host of new issues by adding in supplements. Now here's my disclaimer, I love supplements, but I always say food is the foundation for health. And we, when we over supplement, we can create a lot of problems. And so what a supplement is, is just like what a sup, like the word supplement is. We are filling in the gaps of the diet or where we need to boost your pet's health we're not using it as the foundation to get your pet healthier and better. That's what we rely on food for. So keep that in mind as we go through supplement, our supplement talk today. What we're gonna be talking about is what is a supplement? What are some of the key words you need to know in the supplement industry? Where should you be getting your supplements from? We're also gonna be covering why do you wanna be using supplements? So what area? So things like detox, anti-inflammatories, cancer prevention, cancer treatment, allergies. That's a huge issue right now. Uh, also vitamins, minerals, if you're feeding a home-cooked diet or even a raw diet, or if you're looking to boost the, the benefits of feeding a kibble diet, if you're doing a kibble diet. We're also going to talk about how do you assess whether or not that supplement is good. And I'll cover a couple supplements. Um, that will showcase how to bring it all together and give you some useful tips that you can take home with you. As always, if you guys are here live with us, I appreciate it. Drop in your comments, your questions below, whether you're following us along on Instagram, Facebook, Zoom, so you'll notice me looking all over. Um, so because we'll cover those questions, that's what we're here for. This is Ask Dr. Katie. So ask me your questions that you have about supplements and we'll, we'll, we'll answer those for you. So first, what is a supplement, right? I already kind of mentioned it at the start. So this is vitamins, minerals, herbal products. Things are not classified as a drug that you need a prescription for. So you can go to the store, you can go on Amazon, you can go on Chewy, and you can order these directly. Who here has seen like Facebook ads or Instagram ads or even ads on Google? And it's like, give this now to your pet in order to prevent cancer. So, and then you're like, yes, I want that. That's going to be a supplement that they're selling to you. So supplements, not drugs. Um, so what we want to do is take a look at, okay, what do we want to use this for? So looking at, okay, my dog is healthy young dog healthy. So why would I want to use a supplement? First, look at the food. What kibble are you feeding? Are you doing a home cooked diet? Is that food balanced? Those are very important things that you need to look at. So first, before you even pick up a supplement, we need to assess the diet and make sure that it's optimized for your pet's health, their age, their breed, their activity level, whatever's going on in their body. If you need help with that, go to our last live video we did last week. It's all on YouTube. So the natural pet doctor, check that out because we go through that. So then when we look at, okay, we've assessed the diet. Looks great. Perfect. We've optimized it. 
my dog's feeling great on it, my cat looks good, their coats are nice and shiny, but maybe they're getting older. Okay, so we're entering senior years. So let's say seven years and older. Okay, so what do I need to do to help my pet age gracefully so that we don't develop arthritis, lameness, cancer, other diseases that can happen over time as our bodies age because there's increased inflammation. That's just a natural part of aging. There's degenerative changes. So one of the most common supplements that we tend to use, especially in aging pets, is fish oils. So omega-3 fatty acids. That would be a great one to add in. It's one of the most common supplements that I recommend because our pets, especially if they're being fed a kibble diet, their omega-3 fatty acids are typically low. We have a higher ratio of omega-6s, which aren't a bad thing, but can lead to inflammation in our pets. So let's add some omega-3s in because diet usually doesn't cover that. If you've ever fed a diet that has omega-3s added to it, so sometimes what companies will do is they'll add supplements, nutraceuticals to the food because it's a great marketing thing. Yes, I wanna feed that to my pet. They're gonna feel great on it. The downside with omega-3 fatty acids, so fish oil specifically for your pet food, is that when we're feeding it in a kibble food, it's added, it's added before that kibble goes through that high heat and is extruded as a kibble. So guess what? It's not there anymore. It's degraded. And also that fish oil can go rancid. Have you ever opened a bag of food and had that really like that strong smell and you're like, that's not right. And you're like, this bag's off. That's rancid fish oil. So that's something to be aware of. So when we're looking at supplements, I don't recommend buying those foods that have the extra supplements in it to make your pet's health better. We want to look at where are those holes, where are those deficiencies, how do we optimize our pet's body and the way it functions. And so the other thing that we want to do is you may find, and this is very important, to look at the ingredient list. Does it, is it a proprietary blend? This is so common in the supplement industry. And what the proprietary blend means is that that company, so let's say we want a high dose of a certain herb or you're like, oh yeah, I want that curcumin. I want some omega-3s. I want, let's see, blueberry powder. I want colostrum. We're using something for like supporting gut health and reducing inflammation. So you find the supplement and you're like, this is perfect. And then you look at the ingredient list and on it says proprietary blend. It's like usually I think a little asterisk. And what that means is that company, yes, that product that you want, that supplement that you want is in that supplement, that ingredient that you want is in the supplement. However, they're not going to tell you the amount so they could have less than 1% of that ingredient that you really want in that product you just bought and probably spent a lot of money on. So if you can, I try to avoid proprietary blends, especially when I'm treating for certain things. So I will use supplements to complement therapies such as like cancer treatment, cancer prevention. And I need to know what concentration of the herbs the plant compounds, all the things that I want to use to help that pet, I need to know the milligrams because there's different dosages that we use to receive the therapeutic effects. So that's really important to look at. Now there's some companies I use if they're using Western herb, herbal blends, they'll have proprietary blend on there. We can't always get away from it, but those companies that are doing that for some of their products, I trust them. They do the research, they're run by a veterinarian. It's not just someone putting together a great product to sell it and they're really good at marketing. So it's like having the wool pull, pulled over your eyes. So look for the proprietary blend on that, on the bottle, on the label, whatever you're looking at. So that's an important kind of keyword that you need to tune into. 
The other thing is, is, is this a good quality supplement? How do we assess that? There is so many supplements out there and that whole entire industry, not regulated. It's kind of scary. Anyone can make a supplement and you can put it on the market. And so what do we need to be looking at in order to ensure like we're not wasting a ton of money? You can waste a lot of money on supplements for your pets and for yourself. It's very easy because we want to know that we are doing the right thing and we feel good buying something that we feel like will help benefit our health, our pet's health. So one of the things that you need to look for on supplements is what's called the NASC label. So it stands for the National Animal Supplement Council. And this is a regulated council. So they follow, they've created guidelines and companies can apply to be a part of the NASC. And they're, when they're accepted, they're stating that we follow these guidelines. Our supplements are high quality. We do quality control. We do testing. What's in that product is truly in that product. And so the NASC brand, when you see that on there, you'll see it's, I think it's yellow writing, but you'll see NASC. That's what that is. And that's very, very good. Like you need to see that. Once again, not every good company is a part of NASC or pays all the extra money to have that on the supplements. But it's, it's a way that you as a pet parent can analyze. It's another step. So looking for proprietary blends, avoiding those if you can, and then also looking for that NASC label. The next point is a huge one, and I see this all the time. And it's hard because where you get your supplements is very, very important. So I hope you guys are listening because this is really important. So if you're buying your supplements from Amazon, yeah, it's usually cheaper. Like years ago, I actually used to sell stuff on Amazon. Like I know how it works, not pet stuff, but I know that anyone, anybody can ship products to Amazon and sell it. And so there's a lot of counterfeit products. So this is really important for herbs. So like the Chinese herbs I use, not they're not a prescription product. You can go online, you can find them, you can purchase them. A lot of the brands I use are on Amazon. However, do you know that seller? Do you know if what's in that bottle is truly like the herbal product? Has it been contaminated? Was it expired herbs that they opened up that bottle to pour in? and then sealed it. Like there's crazy stuff that happens out there that people will do to make money. And so I don't recommend that, especially for Chinese herbs. So that's why if you've ever worked with me, I'm like, nope, we're not gonna, we're not gonna use them. Like you can find this online, but I will send these directly to you from the company because I trust the company, they do the testing, they have all the certifications. So that's really important to remember, especially when you're delving into the holistic world there's a lot of things that are Chinese herbal medicine and they're contaminated. They're contaminated with heavy metals, um, other toxins, they could be contaminated with bacterial contamination. So that's really important. For your general supplements, so this is especially true for vitamins, minerals, things that can break down, they can be heat sensitive. I do not recommend purchasing those from Amazon. The Amazon warehouses are not temperature controlled. When we used to sell, we had things like chocolate and like, it's crazy. Like this is like previous life. Don't do this anymore. However, the warehouse is like, we couldn't sell during certain times of year for these things. And it's because they're not temperature controlled. Their warehouses get, they can get up to like 110 degrees or higher. I mean, it was a hundred degrees here yesterday and there's an Amazon warehouse down in Denver. I can only imagine how hot it was in there. So you think about the supplement, let's take some like vitamins, they're sitting there and they're degrading. And so what I would recommend doing, because it, yes, it's cheaper to buy on Amazon, usually depends. There's 
all sorts of tricks and things they'll do. Um, but go to the company. So let's take, for example, like RX Vitamins. I love them. They're fantastic. You can go to that company and buy directly from them. I believe you have to have a doctor like sign off on that purchase. So talk to your vet. Like they should be looking into RX Vitamins anyways. It's a great company. Or if your veterinarian can order it for you, just have them drop ship it directly to you. So that way you know what you're giving isn't contaminated with anything and the heat isn't degrading it. That is very important. And so the biggest thing I look at, even if I have to pay a couple dollars more, that is dollars saved in your pet's health because you can trust the product. We know if like your dog develops diarrhea, that it wasn't from that product and worrying about contamination or something changing and potentially being harmful or toxic to your pet. So that's really important to know. So quality, NASC, where are you buying it from? Looking for proprietary blend. And then what do we use supplements for? So we can use vitamins, minerals to balance a diet. So that would be like synthetic vitamins and minerals. That would be detox. So we can use especially like Western herbs to detox the body. So dandelion, milk thistle, supporting liver health. There's a lot of areas that we can use to help support your pet if they've had anesthesia and detox the drugs gently to get them cleansed and get that out of their system. So that's a really important part that I use all the time for pets. Supporting wellness, so that would be your vitamins, minerals, fish oils can be used. Fish oils can be, omega-3s can be used for so many different areas. Um, that is a very, that's probably one of the most common supplements that I tend to recommend. Now, keeping in mind there are wide dose ranges depending on what we're treating. So this is where it's really important to work with a veterinarian or someone who knows what they're doing if you're adding these things into the diet or into your pet's routine so that we're not over supplementing. Remember, like I can go online and I could find probably a hundred different things that I feel like would benefit my health and I could buy all of them. And it doesn't mean though that they're all gonna work together. They're not gonna cause side effects. So we have to be careful when we're doing that. The other thing is anti-cancer. So I treat a lot of cancer patients. I push for a lot of prevention because cancer makes me sad cancer sucks, had three pets go through cancer, and it's hard. Like we don't want our pets to develop cancer. So what are those things that we can use to support them to prevent cancer, to treat cancer? Things like turmeric. So curcumin, the active component of turmeric. With supplements, there can be really cheap products where we look at it and we're like, okay, I need to use curcumin. However, if that curcumin isn't made bioavailable in the product, so what that means is that the body, when you ingest it or your pet ingests it, it's actually utilized. So it's actually used for the purpose we're using it for. Curcumin is better absorbed with fats. And then if we're using turmeric, so that's the orange spice of like Indian food. So to, that's turmeric, the spice. Curcumin is the active component of that. Turmeric is absorbed better with fats and black pepper. So if we don't know that and we're giving a product and it's a cheaper product and it isn't formulated appropriately, we just waste a lot of money. Um, the other thing is allergies, huge area. Keep in mind, food is the foundation for health. Every single condition I am talking about, food needs to be analyzed and looked at to ensure it's optimized for that pet. And so allergies, if your pet's on a kibble diet and has allergies, we need to talk. So there's a lot we can do. And it doesn't mean that your pet has a food sensitivity. What it means is that your pet has leaky gut. We talk a lot about leaky gut and that leading to inflammation. So we need to assess food first. And the next step is supplements, right? So we're supplementing the diet. We're not fixing your pet through supplements. We're supplementing the diet. So omega-3 fatty acids, so your fish oils, they're great for building up the skin barriers. Usually we use higher dosages for cancer patients, uh, allergy patients, 
keeping in mind if your dog has a sensitive GI tract, we can actually cause loose stool. Also different forms of omega-3 fatty acids can cause loose stool too. So fishy burps, loose stool, those can be signs that that fish oil isn't formulated in the appropriate form. So there's, there's a lot that goes into supplements. And it, remember, it's not regulated. So that's look for the NASC label. Also with allergies, we can use, I love using quercetin. So you probably heard me talk about that if you've followed blogs or heard any previous videos. Quercetin is nature's Benadryl. So we can use these supplements that come from nature that are natural, right? And that's why a lot of you are here and hopefully are following me, the natural pet doctor, because we talk about holistic remedies and how we can integrate that into conventional medicine to achieve better results and outcomes for your pet's health. So we can use quercetin, which naturally reduces histamine in the body, because that's a huge problem with allergies. When we bring down the histamine response, your pet's less itchy, there's less inflammation. So we can use that instead of a drug like Benadryl while we're fixing diet, while we're potentially using herbal medicine to help resolve the underlying issue. So supplements are really handy there. The other area that we use a lot of supplements in is digestion. Is your pet gassy? Does it have loose stool? Does it have inflammatory bowel disease? Um, there's a lot of different conditions. So diarrhea is the most common thing I see with, with dogs. And especially this time of year, Giardia, uh, going up drinking the river water, the lake water. And so we can use probiotics. If your pet's on kibble, we can use digestive enzymes to help break down the proteins, the carbs, and the fats in the diet. And that's going to help your pet absorb those nutrients a lot better rather than everything just passing through the intestinal tract and irritating, and then they're pooping it back out. So probiotics, let's touch on that really quickly. So probi there's so many good probiotics out there, right? <laughs> so what we want to look for are products that have had research. We want to make sure probiotics have over 10 colony forming units per 10 billion, sorry, not 10. That's like really low. That's going to do nothing. So 10 billion CFUs is what it's called. And I tend to not use dairy-based probiotics because dairy is inflammatory. It's mucus forming just like it is for us. And if we're trying to treat the GI system, we can actually cause more issues. So looking for those things when we're, we're looking at a probiotic, what bacterial strain, so good bacteria, that's what a probi probiotic is. We're putting good bacteria back into the, into the gut to help the microbiome feed it the appropriate nutrition and resolve leaky gut which in the end leads to less inflammation, less disease, and also less cancer. And in terms of looking at probiotics, this is huge for, like if you're buying a probiotic from Amazon, I guarantee you those are all dead. They're cooking, they're cooking right now in the States. It's like 120 degrees in the Denver warehouse right now. So that's where working with your vet, asking them where can we source this so that what I'm spending my money on is actually useful. So that's really, really important. Um, just had a question about giving milk, please. So cow's milk, not a fan. Cow's milk creates inflammation, causes all sorts of issues, cr creates leaky gut especially for dogs that are sensitive and especially for, um, you mentioned her dog or your dog has a high liver value. Um, so some type of liver condition. So we definitely wanna avoid cow's milk. Things that we can use, raw goat's milk. So it's very, it's seen differently in the body. Our bodies don't react to that. So that would be a food source. So looking at raw goat's milk, that's food. That's not technically a supplement. So that would be good. Now, milk thistle for liver issues, like we talked about detox, and it's really good for helping to bring down the liver, like liver inflammation. So it, it specifically works with the liver. That's a great product. Now, a lot of times we combine that with SAMI. So denimarin is a common vet product supplement that we recommend. 
but some dogs I find they do better with basic sam or basic milk thistle without SAMe. So if you're using Den and Mare and you're not seeing any results, I always recommend switching to just pure like milk thistle extract, working with your vet for the dose, of course. And then what you can do, like if there's a liver problem, find an integrative veterinarian to work with your normal veterinarian or holistic vet because herbal medicine, huge. We can reduce liver disease we can fix it, we can reduce those liver values. So herbal medicine, like hands down, that's not something that you should be doing on your own though. You need to be working with a veterinarian that's gone through the training to do that because there's a lot to it and it's individualized medicine. So that's really important. And then in terms of the last one, huge area where we use supplements is inflammation. So osteoarthritis, allergies, GI inflammation. There's, there's all sorts of areas, cancer. There's tons of inflammation with cancer. So we can look at, okay, what do we need first diet? Of course. Right. So I'm going to reiterate that because it's the foundation for health. We can use food as medicine. It's called food therapy. And so we use that first, but that takes longer. So that's when we look at the gaps. We fill them in with supplements. So fish oil, so your omega-3 fatty acids, your curcumin products, those are great anti-inflammatories. How do we heal leaky gut? Make, optimizing diet first, putting good bacteria back in there with probiotics, maybe using a digestive enzyme to help break down that food so that your pet's absorbing it. So there's all these factors that we look at. So supplements are really, really powerful when they're used appropriately and when we're using the right products. When we use the wrong things and we're using products that have not what they're supposed to have in them or they're like less than 1%, like we mentioned with some proprietary blends, because we don't know the concentration of those herbs or the supplements that are in there, we may not see the results. And then also too, I didn't mention this with the ingredients, but what are those fillers? We're using treat forms, which are great. Like our pets eat them usually better than if we're feeding like tablets or capsules. And it's like, we're, it's like a positive reinforcement, right? Like it feels good giving your pet something that they love. And so those treats that are in sup the supplements that are in treat form are really popular, but what are the fillers? Is there canola oil? Are there inflammatory fillers that make up that supplement? Because if there are, we are counteracting so much good that we could be doing using a cleaner product. So looking at, okay, if we're trying to avoid grains or GMOs, are we using something that has canola oil? What are the sweeteners that are in there? We need to be assessing like, is this truly helping our pet or is it just making us feel good to give them a treat? And that's really, really important. I also had a question from someone before this about a product called Moringa. I think I said it right. So I apologize if I said that wrong, That's but Moringa. So M-O-R-I-N-G-A, powder. So this is a tropical tree. So in India and in the tropics, and it's a really strong anti-inflammatory. I personally haven't used it a lot. However, I did some brief research on it because I was like, hmm, this is interesting. This could be really useful. And I, I believe I've come across it in some supplements because we'll see a lot of supplements that combine a lot of different things. And it appears to be safe. It has some research behind it and people will be using it for things like anti-inflammatories. So if that's a thing that you can get really easily, if you live in those areas and the trees there and people are making this powder, as long as it's in pure form, I don't know the dosage off my off the top of my head. That's something I'd have to look at. But it's an example of using plant therapy. Like that's what I do. I use plants to help heal your pet or maintain wellness so that they thrive and live a long life. And that's where we can hopefully avoid having to use drugs that have potential side effects. Now there is a place and we can integrate them together. That's important to remember. Not against conventional medicine like I've used it for 10 years, but we can integrate if we need to. We can use Eastern and Western medicine together to achieve better results. 
But what's nice is when we optimize diet, remember, first thing, first foundation, diet, we can fill in the gaps with supplements and help our pets. And so those, those things, looking at, okay, where are we getting our supplements? What's in them? Is this a proprietary blend? What are the ingredients? Where are you purchasing it? Does your pet truly need it? Have we optimized their diet first? Those are the important factors that we need to look at when we're looking at supplements for our pet's health. The final thing I'm gonna to touch on, I think I'm going over this, we're towards the end. However, we're gonna to touch on this because this is a really important thing. So I hope you're still listening and make sure you drop your questions below. So we'll, we'll touch on those. Hemp oil, CBD, it's a supplement, right? So we're not allowed to prescribe it. It's a controlled substance. And this, this is a great example for how uncontrolled the industry is. Anyone can make CBD oil, anyone. And so there are different types of hemp. If you've ever seen like the industrial fiber hemp, that's hemp. You can make hemp seed oil from that. Now that's filled with toxins, pesticides. It doesn't have the broad, like full spectrum of uh, the good things that we're using CBD for, the cannabinoids. We don't have full spectrum. Like there's different cannabinoids and we utilize them all together to gain the results that we want from that product, whether it's inflammation, seizure control, anxiety. So when we are looking at this, I've covered this in depth with our CBD webinar that's in our Healthy Paws membership. So if you want to see that full hour of how to assess CBD, what to, like how to use it appropriately as a pet parent, check out our Healthy Paws membership because that has it. We also have some blog posts on the naturalpetdoctor.com. So check those out too. However, with the hemp oil, do they have a certificate of analysis? Is the certificate of analysis a real certificate of analysis that analyzes every single product? And what that shows is what CBD concentration is pregnant or pre present, not pregnant, present. Uh, if there's any contamination from bacterial contamination, mycotoxins, pesticides, all sorts of things. And that's really important. And I find so many people go down the CBD path because you can get it as a pet parent now in most states pretty easily. And the people that are you like sending, like selling it to you, they don't know what they're doing. They don't. I hear it all the time. Oh, just give like the human dosage. It's fine. Your pet will be fine. It's so safe. And I'm like, yes, it has a high therapeutic index, like meaning that it's not going to cause like you have to give a ton before you see side effects. However, if that product, that CBD product has THC in it, THC is toxic to pets. And that's the thing, like we can create problems by giving a poor quality product. So using companies that you love and trust, like I love certain CBD companies. Those are the ones I recommend to people because I know they grow it right. They grow it organically. It's a full spectrum. They give me concentrations um, like mig per kig, mig per mil. I can calculate out the dosage for my patients. Those are all things that are really, really important. And it's just that one is just one example of how, why we need to know what we're doing when we're looking at supplements and introducing them into our pet's diet. Okay. I have a question about my dog won't eat fish oil pills and she doesn't always eat her food right away. So I can't squeeze it onto her food. How can I safely give her omega-3s? So that's where I would go to food sources. So why isn't she eating? Like there's something that's going, going on with, okay, why does she not want to eat her food? And this happened to my own dog. So if you followed me for a while, you know about Finn. So Finn was our beloved German shepherd who had a brain tumor. And years, a couple years ago, we actually, he passed away recently. Um, so if you're watching this video, I don't know, in the past, like passed away March, 2020. And he was on a kibble diet. And th three years prior to him passing, I was like, he didn't want to eat his food. And 
I was like, why doesn't this dog want to eat his food? It's a great food. I learned about this in vet school. I recommend it to my patients. I was working in a conventional clinic at the time, didn't have all the knowledge that I have now. And I was like, no, there's something not right here. And I did more research. And I, this is at the time that I was going down the path of really getting into like integrating holistic medicine. And I was like, there's something not right. And we switched him to a home cooked, balanced, balanced diet, remember, has to be balanced. And many home cooked diets are not. And he started dancing for his food. He did that every day until the end of his life. Food was never an issue for us ever again, other than the few, like the week where we had to put him on conventional meds when we first diagnosed his brain tumor. And then that's when I switched to holistic medicine. He started eating again. So it was one of the things where we have to look at why isn't your pet eating? There's something going on. And I, that's where we definitely can do a, a consultation about that. So and talk about what food sources. So going back to the original question, so omega-3. So I look at, okay, why is your pet eating? How do we fix that? And then what real food can we use for omega-3s? Sardines, if you can access sardines. They're a great source. We can use real fish. Those are, those are great sources. So, but sardines are also really good because they're, they're actually a fish. Like they're the whole fish. Like that sounds really stupid saying it that way, but it is, it has the bones, it has the organs, it has like everything. So I love using sardines, especially when I'm formulating home cooked diets. I don't know if that's an, if you can get that. I think you just mentioned you're in India. So, but that may be something we're looking at, okay, what can we use instead that might be whole foods. And there's other supplements that we could talk about too that are gonna help with that. Okay, let me see in terms of anybody else have any other questions? I know I went a little bit over. Um, I get a little crazy when I start talking about food and supplements and herbal medicine, because there's so many things that we can do. So if you want to learn more about supplements, we do have a blog post about it, especially relating to cancer. So check out our blog post on the naturalpetdoctor.com. If you want more videos, we have an hour video on how to safely use CBD in your pets. We have an hour long video on how to analyze your pet's diet in relation to allergies and what supplements to use safely there. We also talk about grain-free diets and heart conditions. Those are all on our website in our membership. So Healthy Paws membership, it's our Natural Pet Tribe membership. There's different options. So check that out on our website. I'll put a link below this video when we post it too. And keep joining us for our monthly webinars. This month, we're doing an essential oils webinar on how to use essential oils safely for your dogs and cats register that. It is free. These are not going to continue to be free, so take advantage of it. Also, for our kitty cat lovers, because we don't want to leave out our cats, is we're going to be talking about kidney disease in cats. So we're going to be touching on what can you use as food and how you can help them and what natural remedies you can use if they do have kidney disease, because I hate disease. Like, I want to just, like, obliterate all disease. I've had three pets die from cancer. Like, disease, I hate it. However, so prevention is key. However, we can do so much. We can do so much more than conventional medicine. We can integrate them together. That's key. Remember that. But when we integrate herbal medicine, especially liver disease, kidney disease, and we're adding herbs and supplements and optimizing the nutrition, we, were, we get rid of things like liver disease, kidney disease. I, one of my cat patients, she was on death's door. And the thing is, is he, so he was actually in the hospital for four days, IV fluid therapy. They were getting ready to euthanize him. And she reached out and she's like, no, I just, I have to try. I have to try. And I get goosebumps actually like saying this, cause this was a few years ago. I think it's been like maybe a year and a half, two years now. We put him on herbal medicine. His kidney values are normal. He eats really well. He lives a normal life. Like how incredible is that? All we can do with conventional medicine is appetite stimulants, sub-Q fluids, acid reducers, low protein diets. This cat is eating a high protein diet too. And he is thriving. 
So there's so much that we can do that we have to be, we need to tap into this integrating Eastern and Western, and we're going to achieve so much better results for, for our pets and give them that long, healthy life. I would change so many things going back to how I raised my Finn as a puppy through his, you know, adult years. I would change so much knowing what I know now and my cats, I would change their diet. I would change it immediately. I would have integrated raw from kitten. And there's ways to do that. And we, we offer that. So if you don't have a veterinarian that does that, reach out. Like we can partner together, do nutritional consultations. We do herbal medicine consultations. We combine all of them. So definitely, definitely reach out. We may be limited if you're, you know, say in India, but we can talk about food sources that you have and what we can use. So keep that in mind. Like if you feel stuck, if you feel alone, you feel like there's no hope left. I totally understand. I was there with Finn and we have options. So please, please, please reach out. You're not, you're not alone. We can help. So, all right. Thank you for being here so much on a Saturday morning. You guys are all amazing. Make sure you check out our website. I'll post the link below for our Healthy Paws membership. I'd love to see you guys there, interact with you. Check out our private Facebook group for more in depth and just joining an amazing community of pet parents like you guys that just want more and love your pets to death and just want the best for them because you are my people. So thank you once again. We'll see you next week. So 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we go live once again. Make sure you check out all the free webinars we're doing this month. Uh, take advantage of that. Next week, we're talking about kidney disease. So it's going to be brief compared to our webinar, but we'll touch on cats and dogs. So definitely join us for that. All right, everyone, take care. Have a fantastic weekend. This is Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor.